Well, Pastor Terry has been sharing. How many of you guys enjoyed uh, Sean last week? Any, you guys enjoyed what he shared, had to share last week about? It was really good. We were with him yesterday. And uh, when I found out that I was, what I was going to be preaching to you this morning and sharing with you, I had this word that I, that I really have had in my heart for a while. And it's, it's a word really of, of encouragement. At the same time, I want us to, to understand where God has positioned us in this time. Uh, where he's positioned us and what he's called us to do. And so I, um, I w- was thinking about Terry's series of his messages that, that had to do with God's original intent for man, right? You know, we've been talking about that for a while. We've been talking about his original intent. And so I want to talk to you this morning just about his original intent for, for us and as it comes to relationships, as it comes to what God has called us to about being connected, God really has, because I, I know, I know a lot of you and a, a lot of, of people that I've talked to, just there's, there's just something on the inside of them that wants to be connected in what God is doing, but they're just not. People are not, because you can come to church and still not be connected. <laughs> you can be in a life group. I'm in a life group. You can be in a life group and still not be connected. You can have relationships and still not be connected. And so the truth is, is that in this time, there's no greater sense of urgency where God is connecting his people for such a time as this. He's connecting us for such a time as this. And uh, I I was thinking about this. I was talking to Vanessa even about it last night. (laughs) When I first came to Sojourn Church, um, I did not want to come to Sojourn Church. Right. I didn't want to come. And Vanessa and I, we were dating and... um, we got into an argument on the way to church. Don't, y'all laughing, but y'all know it happens. Don't act like, like holy or not. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened to him. You know you get in an argument sometimes when you go we're in the car, on the way, pulling up in the driveway, all of a sudden, hallelujah, Lord. So good to be in the house of the Lord today. You know you get into arguments. You beat your kids halfway to church and then get here and feel like ain't everything's going away. Now go into class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to act all holy. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Some of y'all, yeah, just go loosen up a little bit. It's all right. If, if, if the rock hits you, go ahead and say, oh, me, whatever it is. So but anyway, so the deal is, is that we got an argument on the way to church because I did not want to go to this church. I did not. There's something on the inside of me that I, I'm used to going to a church where you go in, you have your service, you have your praise and worship and you leave. And that's that's the end of it. And you have fried chicken afterwards. You know what I'm saying? That's just that's how it is. And, and you go in and there's no connection. You high five each other. Everything's fine. And there's no connection whatsoever. And so I knew knew that if I went to this church, first of all, I'm like, I'm out of place. I'm going to go to this church and their theme is making disciples that make a difference. And I'm thinking to myself, they're going to be all up in my (laughs) Kool-Aid. Seriously, I'm going to have to go. You can't go into a place like that and and with the theme of making disciples who make a difference and don't realize that you're going to have to get intertwined with lives. And, and, and have to relate to people. And I just didn't want to go. We got into an argument and I told her, I said, I'm not going. You know, we were dating. She's like, well, you are going. I was like, I'm not either. You know, yes, you are. It's like, no, I, what is wrong with you? Nothing. You know, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm good. I just don't want to go. And I just knew that that, that was, a, it was a turning point in my life. Let me tell you the reason why I didn't want to go. Because there's something in me that is offended. There's something in me that's offended by accountability. There's something in me that cringes when I have to when I have to go after a relationship and and people know my stuff and I have to put it out there on the table and I have to be vulnerable and I have to be at a place where I'm sharing and doing life with people. I don't want to do that. There's something in me that likes to isolate. And if you would be honest, you know, that's in you, too. The, the, the thing that drives us sometimes, the thing that we, we isolate and we, we go off and do our own thing. I grew up in a house where you don't, you don't share your feelings. You tough it out. I want to see you crying. I want to see you, you, you tough it out and you go it along. You don't share your stuff with people. You don't share your life with people. You keep that stuff in. My dad would say that he goes, what goes on in the McRae household stays in the McRae household. You know, I'm just like, I'm gonna call the police on you. <laughs> This ain't Vegas, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is Vegas, you know? But, but you're laughing, but you know it's true. You know it's true. God has called us to be knit together, one another, knit together, joined together with the scriptures that we're going to read here in just a minute. And you're called to 
this life with one another. God has called you to live this life with one another so that we can carry out God's purposes and plans for our lives in this time. It's such a time as this for us to be connected together. And I grew up with that sense. And as much as I love people and God has put it within me to love people, I love being with people. I love interacting with people. I, I'm telling you, I, I just do. My wife is just like, you. oh, do you know that guy? I go, no, never seen him before in my life, you know. And she's just like, why are you talking to him? I was like, just, I don't know. I just love people. It's just the way it is. But as much as I love people and I enjoy and I, I enjoy being with people, there's still this thing in me that isolates sometimes. I'll be honest with you, uh, it's, it's damaging to my walk with the Lord because I am not called to walk this Christian life out by myself. You are not called to walk this Christian life out by yourself. So in, when I started and I came here and I'm telling you just to finish the story, when that's not got in that argument, I did the same thing. I came in. Hi, how you doing? You know, saying we have a catch the vision class. I'm not catching nothing from y'all. You know what I'm saying? We ain't catching nothing. Don't be throwing nothing. I ain't catching nothing. You know, <clears throat> catching nothing. Catch, I got your vision. And so I come here. And, and, and I'm sitting in Prague, and, and it was one of the days where I, I had on shorts, and I never wear shorts to church. You know, just because I got them chicken legs, you know, I wear shorts to church. church. And so Vanessa, Vanessa, you go in, you go in, and I'm going to stay out here. And so she goes, we're fine. She goes, and this is what she did when we were in college, when we were in Bible st- school together. I'd sit in the back, and she goes, if you want to sit with me, you're going to have to come up here to the front. Because that's how I am. And so I, I found myself at the front for some reason, you know. My friends were like, what are you doing? I'm just like, shut up, you know, leave me alone. And so it's the same thing. She goes, I'm going to church, you can, you can stay out here. So I sit in the, in the, in the car in, in the parking lot, and here comes an entourage. And they say to me, either you come into service or you leave. And I'm just like, see, God, it's rejection. They don't want me here, you know. And it, I'm just telling you, the enemy just, he craves for us to be at a place where we're rejected and we're not walking in the, in the relationship with people. He wants that. So we'll find ways to be rejected so we don't have to do life with each other. We'll find we're rejected and so before we reject it, I'm going to reject you before you reject me. We're just going to be a rejection party up in here, you know what I'm saying? Walk in rejection, that's my name. We wear it sometimes like, oh, that was loud. We wear it sometimes like a badge, you know. I Hi, hello. My name is rejected. <laughs> and the truth is, is that God has not called us to walk and live in a place of, of where, where it's rejection, but we live in a place of relationship. Relationship here and relationship here. So I want you to turn your Bibles. Do you understand what I'm saying to you this morning? Yes. Turn your Bibles this morning. We're going we're gonna to explore some scriptures uh, this morning. So turn your Bibles to Ephesians 4. Do Ephesians 4. And we're going to start at, we'll start at 11. And we usually read this scripture when it, when it has to talk to, when it's talking about, when it's talking about pastors and what pastors are supposed to do. But I'm going to look at it just a little bit different this morning. Verse 11 says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of, the, of ministry, <clears throat> for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature <clears throat> of the fullness of Christ." That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Now, here's what I want us to look at. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things. Everybody say all things. We grow up in in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined. Everybody say joined. And knit together, say knit together, by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying <clears throat> of itself in love. And here's what I want us to focus on. See, we're joined together. I'm going to exegete this passage. We're joined together. That means you can't even get away from that. You're, you're joined together in Christ by relationships because of people that are in the body of Christ. We're in the body of Christ. We're going to read here in just a little bit that there's a different, there, obviously there's different parts of the body, but we're all joined together. Here's what the word joined means. I want to give you a definition of what the word joined means. The word joined means to bring in contact, connect, 
or bring or put together, to come in contact or union with, to bring together in a particular relation or for a specific purpose, to become a member, to enlist. How I many you know we're part of an army? We're joined together to come into company of or meet, participate with. See, God's called us to be joined together, to get joined together in love. And so the, how do we grow? I know that there's, there's times in my life where I would isolate that I wouldn't be growing in the things of God because there'd be no one speaking into my life. There'd be no one sharing and doing life with me and I'd be doing it on my own. I just will be doing it on my own, and, 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 it's, and, it's, and it's not good. I would, think, I would say, say things to myself like, you're strong, like a gazelle. You know, I'm strong. I'm good. I don't need anybody else. I don't need you. I'm strong like a gazelle, you know? But, you know, I'd be that gazelle while everybody else is grazing. I'd be over there grazing by myself, and here comes Mr. Lion. You know what I'm saying? Here comes Mr. Lion, and I'd be by myself, and there'd be no help whatsoever. Some of you in here this morning, you find yourself in a place where you're isolated, and there's no help whatsoever for you because you, we've decided or you've decided that you are, you're going to go and walk this Christian life out by yourself. And I want to suggest to you this morning that God has not called you to walk it out by yourself. Get back in the fold where there's health, where there's growth, where there's relationship, where there's, where there's people that surround you and help you walk out these things in your life. Amen? Amen. It's vitally important that we walk out and have relationship together. I remember a message that Randy preached not too long ago about the trees and how the root systems grow together and they're intertwined and they lock together. You are locked together in Christ. And so if you get to a place where you're isolated and, you, and the enemy tries to get you to the place, I'm telling you, the enemy loves to, he, he goes about like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. And if you're at a place where you're out among from uh, the, the gathering and the, and the protection and the and the life of, of the body of Christ, you're going to find yourself in, in a world of mess. It's going to be a, just a mess. It just is. And so God's called us to walk in relationship together. We're joined together. The other word that we use was we're knit together. When you think about knitting, you think about, <laughs> I don't want to say that, little old lady. That's not what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about a sweater and, and how that each fabric is woven together intricately. And so when you put on that garment, the whole garment, whole garment is together. And so that's what God's called us to be and do. Amen. He's called us to be so joined and knit together for the for the to, for growth. Everybody say growth. Here's what I want to say. This. Growing in Christ. You know, I, I, I have to have that. And that's why I believe that even in this hour, as we're joined together, that God is calling the fathers to stand up in this time. I'm going to say that again. I believe that God has called the fathers to join, to, to stand up in this time. Amen. Mothers, time for you to take your rightful place in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Sons and daughters, join together, knit together for, for the growth and the edification of the body of Christ. Us walking together, speaking the truth in love. And that's what I didn't want to happen. I didn't want anybody telling me about my stuff, that I needed to do this. I needed to grow. I need to make sure that this happened. You know, Chris, you need, to, you need to work on this. You work on it, you know, because I don't want anybody to try to tell me what to do with my life. And it's not my life. As the Bible says, I died with Christ. And then I was raised together in new life with him. And so I'm joined in the body of Christ. So it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives within me. And because Christ lives within me, then I am able to live the life that he's called me to with the brothers and sisters of God, walking and doing what he's called us to do. Amen. Didn't want that. Didn't, didn't want to have to do that. I remember one time Vanessa and I were having trouble with our finances and it was completely it was completely my fault, as it always is. It's my fault. And we had got, I had gotten us like terribly into debt. I mean, like a lot of debt, like $30,000 in debt. <clears throat> and it was, it was crazy because I was just like, man, I don't know what to do. But I knew I'd gotten myself into that place. And so I was just like, what do I do? We well, can't tell anybody about that. You can't tell anybody about that. You can't let anybody know that your weaknesses. God forbid we let people know what's going on in our lives. God forbid we share the weaknesses because we're, the body of Christ is not called to help us walk through these things, right? <laughs> Why come to church then? Because there's good music. No, absolutely. <laughs> 
Why come to church then? Just to high five people. No, we come to church so we can join and do life together so that when we leave these four walls that the power of God is on the inside of us and we're doing what God's called us to do everywhere that we go. And we do life together. And so I remember trying to talk to them. Just like, what do I do? But I was like, you're going to talk to somebody. And I was like, well, I don't know anybody to talk to. So we talked. So we say we got to join a life group. So we joined a life group that had to do with finances. And I learned principles from people. Learned a word called budget, you know. And, and I, I learned how to, how, like, we, we learned how to, we realized uh, out of uh, now 17 years of marriage, I don't know how long we were married then, realized that I'm not good with money. And she's excellent with money. And so people had to tell us that. We imagine that. And that was, it was hurtful for me because people tell me, Chris, you're just not good with money. What? I am good with it. See, it's in my wallet. I enjoy it. It's good. I enjoy money. <laughs> money comes in my wallet. And see, and she's nature like, that's the problem. It goes out of your wallet too. So we, we just learned some things about ourselves. Now there's things, I would have tried to diagnose the problem myself and I would still be in the same rut today. See, that's the problem is we try to di- self-diagnose and you can't, a physician can't heal your, itself, himself. We're trying to heal ourselves and diagnose the problem, but I need somebody else to try to help me with that. And so because of principles and different things that we learned in a life group, walking together in a life group, man, it was, wasn't long after that that the $30,000 credit card debt was eradicated within about six months, just eradicated. How did you do that? I didn't rob a 7-Eleven, if that's what you're asking. That didn't happen. But principles together, things that happened, things lined up so that that can happen. There was life there. We, lo- we still got the book. You know, we still, we still enjoy, I mean, just because of just principles and people speaking into our life. And so I began to see the importance of relationships then. I began to see that walking together and doing life together with, with, with believers and like-minded believers, it just helped me. And then I started looking for it. Then it's looking for fathers to, spend, to speak into my life. And, and they would tell me things that I didn't want to hear. And can I just tell you something? Speaking the truth in love, sometimes you're going to hear things that you don't want to hear. They're going to say things to you and they're going to speak in, speak in your life things that you just absolutely just don't want to hear. It. But the truth is, it's life if you'll take it. And being connected because it's important. It's vital. It's very, it's vital for the body, for, for your growth and for your edification. Amen. And every life that we're connecting with, that we connect with is important. One, one, every, every piece is important. Every part of it. I want you to turn to Romans chapter 12. Are you guys understanding what I'm saying? Romans chapter 12. Start at verse three. It says, for I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. Everybody say amen. 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 We don't have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts different according to the grace, to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. (laughs) If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry. Let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with, with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy and with cheerfulness. Here's what we're talking about. One one, everybody in here has gifts that God has given. There's a measure of gifts. We need those gifts. I want to tell you that. We need those gifts. We need the gifts that God's put on the inside of you to be connected. Not one gift that God's put on the inside of you is not important. But they're different gifts. Can I just tell you something this morning that is a, may come as a shock to you? I am not called to lead worship. <laughs> Roland is. But I, I just, I, I bet that may, how many of that shocked you this morning? You just felt like this. Just, I just, I never would have guessed that. <laughs> never would have guessed it. I am not called to lead worship, but I, I am called to walk in relationship with Roland. I'm called to preach and I'm called, all the gifts are important. Every single gift, the gift that God's put on the inside of you is important. And we need those gifts for this. So stop hiding them from us and being isolated. We need those gifts to be able to function the way God has called us to function. When you decide to isolate, you move yourself out of the path of us being able to use the gift that God's given to you. And it's not right. I'm going to tell you this morning. It's not right for you to isolate yourself and hide your gifts, you know, and it, what, this ain't Christmas. We ain't hiding gifts. This ain't birthday. You bring your gifts at the table so we can use them and walk effectively the way God has called us to use them. Amen? Everyone is important. 
Every gift is important that God's put on the inside of you. So stop minimalizing your gift and saying it's not, it's not important. I just, I'm just little old me and I'll just come to church and nobody wants to know what I have. That's not right. We want to have what God's put on the inside of you. We want to know you uh, the way that God's called us to know you and walk with you the way he's called us to walk with you. Every part is important. I was working on, I was working on our, our swimming pool one day and I was frustrated and I was mad. I'm like, man, I'm going to have to call somebody and, and, and ask my wife for money and I'm going to have to figure out, <laughs> I'm going to have to figure out how this thing is. So in the middle of the deal, I just like, God, would you please show me what's going on with this thing? And finally I looked at it and there was just this little bitty wire that was just disconnected and I just connected it and the thing worked perfectly. And I said to myself, that little bitty thing had a key to this whole operation, but it was needed and it was important and the function was important. So let it be disconnected the same way you need to view yourself. You try to act like, well, I'm just a little bitty thing, but I'm telling you, God has put gifts and talents on the inside of you and we need it to be able to walk as though God's called us to walk. Amen. Amen. When I was a little, in my, well, I was younger in, in high school, my dad used to take us to the nursing home. And uh, we would go to the nursing home a lot because we prayed. That was his ministry. We, after church, we'd go pray for people. And uh, I was in the band, a marching band. I played the tuba. And um, dad was like, why don't you bring your tuba to the nursing home? <laughs> I was like, dad, it's huge. He goes, why don't you bring it to the nursing home? He goes, I heard you playing that song, Amazing Grace. I was like, I was just playing. He goes, I, I heard you playing. Yes, sir. I, I, was, I was practicing. And he said, bring it. He goes, I want you to lead off with that. With a tuba, Dad? With a tuba. The anointing can, you don't know, the anointing can come on you. I'm like, not with a tuba. <laughs> Dad, not with a tuba. Seriously, don't let me do this, please. He goes, you're bringing it. So we bring the tuba, and, he's, and he, 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 he introduces me. This is my son, Chris. And he's going to sing and do Amazing Grace on the tuba. <laughs> so I get in. And I'm dying to this thing. And so I finally get done. No one claps. No one does anything. It's a nursing home. They just look at me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I get off the stage and I sit down and I go, that was awful. And I kid you not, this lady leans over to me and she goes, did your dad have you play that song on the tuba? <laughs> True story. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, tell him not to do that again. You're horrible on the tuba. You're not any good whatsoever. <laughs> True story. <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> so, <laughs> Chris, why are you sharing that with us? Because we need people in the body of Christ that knows our gift and to be able to tell us what we're good at and the things that we're not good at. <laughs> I need you. No, I'm kidding. Because if any one of y'all tell me that this message was bad, I'm telling you, you're going you're gonna to feel the wrath of the tuba tonight, this evening. Amen. <laughs> But it's true. It's true. Some of us are good at things and some of us are not. But I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter what you think that you're good at and what, what is what God has given you. And we still need it. And we still need to walk together. And we still need, you still need to recognize that the gifts and the talents that he's given you. I feel like that I'm called to preach. I love preaching. I love speaking. I know that God's called me to do that. I am not called to lead worship. But I'm telling you what, my gift is no less important than Roland's gift. And Roland's gift is no important, less important than Pastor Terry's gift and your gift is no important no less important than any gifts that we have in this church Amen. you understand what I'm saying to you yeah. it's important so you got to understand that I'm going to read this last scripture and then I'm going to let you go because it's very important it's, about, it's something because the reason why I'm sharing this stuff with you today and I'm usually you know trying to fiery and preach and whatever but the truth is is that I, I realize that there's some of us that are coming to church and I'm going to say this as someone who cares about this body and loves this church. I realize that there are people that are coming to this church that are just not connected. And you think you are, but you're not. And you think and, and, and you need to ask yourself really what I call this message when, when I wrote it. I called it CSI, crime scene investigation. But I, I, I want to call it 
connected, being connected, serving together, and being involved. Because that's important. The crime is not being connected. The scene is the body of Christ, and I want you to investigate where you are. Where are you in this, in this scene, in the body of Christ? Where are you? Where is God leading you to connect? Where is he leading you to, to join, be joined together? Because it's important. It's like, Pastor Chris, we've heard this message before. I'd heard it before, hundreds of times. Still wasn't connected. First Corinthians, the last, script, last verse of scripture, it's a long one. First Corinthians chapter 12. We'll start at verse 12. It says, for as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. Also, so also is Christ. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Thank the Lord. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. How many of you have had a drink of that spirit? Any good? For in fact... The body is not one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. He did that. He set you in the body just as he pleased. And if there were all one member, where would the body be? Where would the body be if we're all one member? So you can't say to the hand, I don't need you. The hand can't say to the eye, I don't need you. It goes on to say that the ear can't say to the nose, I don't need you. We all need every part of the body effectively working together. Now, this is the last thing I'm going to say to you. I was, I've done many memorial services. I've done some funerals. But nothing like I have been a part of a few weeks ago with B.J. Compton's memorial service. It was very touching because I got the email when it happened and Pastor Hugh said to me, he said, or he sent an email out, he goes, this man was well loved, well connected. And I saw that because I was, I was on the lake with the kids and I was just like, wow. I, and I thought about all the, the times that I had been preaching and I'd come down off of this platform and met BJ. And he'd say to me, man, that was good. And you got a gift to be able to preach and communicate. He goes, keep on doing it. You know, and he'd just walk off. I'd be like, who was that masked man? Anyway, so he, <laughs> you know, he just, he would do that. It was just encouragement after encouragement. But I did not know until I came to that memorial service how well connected that man was. All the lives that he affected, all the different people that he affected. And I thought about it. I go, you know what? Number one, if I go, I want to go doing something that I love. So I'm not going to drop dead here because I do love preaching. But anyway, I, I want to do something I love. But, but I, when, I, when I saw the people and all the things that, that he was connected, this is what I, I even brought it this morning. This spirit, this, this scripture that he had in the beginning of, 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 of the obituary. Here's what, here's what it says. It's Romans 15, 5 through 7. May God who gives his patience and encouragement help you live in complete harmony with each other. As fitting for followers of Christ. Then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, accept each other, <clears throat> accept each other just as Christ has accepted you, so that God will be given the glory. That's what we're supposed to do. And I want that said of me. He loved well, he was connected, and he and he celebrated every gift. That God has given him, God gave him. I want everybody to look up here. You are a gift. And you don't see that. Somebody said, Is me? Yes, you're a gift to the body of Christ, and we need you. So let's walk together and connect together and be who God's called us to be. Amen? Let's stand. Lord, I do want to thank you. 
for everything, Lord, that, that you've done for us. You paid for us to be able to walk in victory, walk in complete and total victory and live the way that you've called us to live. Lord, I pray for those that have been isolated and just off on their own. We call them back home right now in Jesus name. We call them into the unity of the faith. We call them, Lord, that we, when we extend an invitation, Lord, to be connected into, into the body as they, are, as they are in the body. But we thank you, Lord, that the unity that comes, Lord, as we walk together and all that you've called us to walk in, to be all that you've called us to be, because we need each other, Lord. You've called us to walk in in unity. So I pray, Lord, that you would see, you would, you would cause us, Lord, to see as you do, to see each other as you do, Lord, to love, to speak the truth in love and be all that you called us to be. So we thank you for that. And Lord, I bless these people, Lord, each one of them, Lord, because you love them. Lord, I love them. We, we are joined together. So we pray, Lord, the, that the blessings of the Lord, Lord, that make it rich and add no sorrow to it, Lord, will be upon your people. Thank you, Lord, that they're blessed spiritually, physically, emotionally, uh, um, financially, above they, the, all that they could ask or think, God. And we thank you for, for all that you're doing. Join us together, Lord, and continue to knit us together together, Lord, because the world needs to know this Savior, God. And so as you, uh, as you are empowering us and equipping us to walk out this life that you called us to, to walk out, Lord, that people will see and know uh, they are my disciples because of the love that they have for one another. And we thank you for that. And we bless them in Jesus' name. Amen.